Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week so far. Um, I'm making this opening uh, after the video, and for the simple reason I want to explain what we're going to do today. Uh, today, we are tackling another motor simply because uh, my buddy Terry Benko, who has a uh, fantastic channel of restoring vintage motors electric motors and uh he sent me a, a century motor a while back and i want to get good enough before i tackle that beautiful motor and i want to practice on some uh some less <laughs> desirable motors so i was at elephant trunk last week father's day picked up this beautiful little uh delco motor for 20 bucks and uh and I said, this is what we're going to go. Now, remember, I'm learning on every aspect of electric motors. I'm a novice, and uh, but that's the only way you get to it. You know, you have to experiment. So it's funny because when I got this back together, it wasn't working right. I had to take it apart like four times, five times before I finally got it to do what it's supposed to. And it's still not 100%, but I was really happy with the finish. I want to share this video with you. So... There's going to be a lot of voiceover in it because I have to go through and back and forth. And there was a lot. Of, I want to cut it down. I can't have you watch a half hour video. So uh, let's get started right away. And I hope you enjoy it. And here it is. This is what I picked up. We're going to be working on today. I got this beautiful Delco. I believe it's the first Delco I own. It's a, uh, a Delco one to third horsepower uh, induction motor. And uh, I just wanted to dive into this because as you know, I'm working my way up to getting enough experience where I could work on Terry Benko's beautiful century motor that he sent over to me. And uh, that is why I am really trying to uh, get more knowledge into these before I tackle that one. So this one here, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting motor. The funny thing is I bought this from a guy who is a former machinist and we always joke around and stuff. And when he, I said, how much for the motor? He goes, uh, $20. And he goes, and, I, and includes the switch. And look at this. <laughs> includes the switch. That's great, huh? Uh, you know what? What did I tell you? Every time you see one of these motors, there's always some kind of wonky wiring on there. And sure enough, this is true. Just goes to show you. They're always like that. They're always crazy. And uh, so this one has the buffing wheel included. Again, uh, uh, look at this arrangement on here. It looks like home. I don't know what that's all about, but this is what I wanted. The motor. Uh, he says it works. I didn't plug it in yet. It does have a grounded cord, but I doubt it's ground. But anyway, we'll try it out, see how it works. It spins freely. It's got the oil caps. It should be a fun little project just to clean up and uh, put into co the collection. Um, so let's let's right now, without further ado, let's plug it in. Make sure this is off, and we'll plug it in and see how this works. Okay, it's plugged in now. I promise you this is the first time I'm, I'm trying it, and he said it works. These things usually always work. And you know, what's so funny is if uh, years ago, back in the 70s and 80s and stuff like that, or your father probably, if he was a handyman or something, these motors always came in refrigerators, air conditioners, uh they came in uh, washers, dryers, all appliances, things like that. So whenever you would see one thrown away on the side of the road, you, I know I did it as a kid. You would, you know, take out the bolts, cut the wire, and you'd have a motor, you know, that you could do just like this. You could put attached stuff to it. So uh, this is no exception. This is one of the motors that came from an appliance. And depending on the appliance it comes from, how much wear and tear it has. Now... When you see a motor like this and you see a sanding drum, those are the ones that, you know, a lot of times dust will get into the motor, anything that's sanding. So there's something you have to think about. Buffing, you don't do you don't spend a lot of time with the buffing, so it's a little bit better. But uh, even a washing machine, really, you only use it a couple times a week. They usually last forever. But uh, a furnace motor, that that's a little bit different. That has more wear on it. So if you see a, a motor like this in a box, and it's not the same motor as what's written on the box. That was most likely they took it out of the furnace or the burner. They took the new one and put the new one in and left. So it's, you know, that's where you have to deal with that. Let's turn it on, see what happens. Okay, a little slow starting. A little vibration from the that, but okay. So let's 
take this apart. At least we know it works. Again, it's a little slow starting. Okay, first thing, we're gonna, a little bit of heat, a little bit of 50-50. Take this arbor off of here, this homemade arbor. Okay, here is the uh, wiring hookup, and you can see, like I said, the ground. I don't see the ground hooked to anything, which is very common. Uh, you know, some people like to uh, add a ground later on, but uh, you can see here we have the hot going to the lower one and the uh, the uh, neutral going to the top one. Now, I think there's a tag on here. It says to reverse direction, you reverse the red wire. So when we open this up, we'll see the, an additional wire. But this here is this little push button here. It looks like a thermal reset, which is a nice op, uh, thing to have because whenever you have these motors that don't have slots in it for air, they do, it's good because a lot of dirt and grime don't get into the motor. That's why it's sealed. So that's fantastic. But it don't have as much airflow through there. And because of that, they can overheat. So a thermal resets, as soon as it gets hot, this will pop and it until it cools down. So it's a great thing to have when you don't have those slotted uh, vents. Okay, next up, we're removing the bell housing ends, the bell ends. Uh, this one here has long threaded screws, more or less. So you have a slotted end here and you have a nut end on this side. It's always advisable to loosen up the nut end and try and work with the screw end. So you loosen this up and you just hold that tight with a, a large screwdriver. Now, before you start anything, it's a good idea. There's always gunk. Take a, a Dremel and wipe around the, uh, just go around the threads. The reason we do that is because now you have clean threads to work it. And now just a little bit of 50-50 on there. There we go. Just a drop of 50-50 on there. And now when you go to loosen it, it just makes it so much easier than if you tried to do it with all that griming on. So always give yourself a little bit of help so that you're not dealing with projects uh, trouble later on. It's much easier to hit it first. Now remember, don't overstep this step here What I'm telling you now. this Clean this shaft up really good with a wire brush and 50-50 and just get it nice and clean because it's going to pass through that bushing. And if there's any burrs like this here, you see that little burr there? Something slid up or whatever. You're going to have to take a file and you're going to have to smooth that burr down because if you could feel it with your finger... That's too much. And you just smooth it down with a file, rotate the shaft, hit it with a file until you feel nothing. So this way, when it passes through the bushing, it will not create a score or scar. Okay, now we removed all the bolts that held, hold the bell ends onto here. Now you'll see there's lips over here. And here's where you have to be careful. Now, what I like to do is I have a punch. This is a specially made punch. And you see it's a square edge, you know, a blunt but square edge. You're going to put this under the lip here. And you're going to tap it around until this pops off. But you don't want to use a soft blow on something like this because you need that initial shock. Okay? And you're not going to be banging on it hard. So you don't have to worry about mushrooming it. So you're going to put it here. You're going to give it a tap here. Tap here. You can see we've already got some movement. Tap down here. Try and pull it, you know, go around just like a star pattern. And you see already we got that movement. Very easy. But you want that shock of steel. You don't want your soft blow really wouldn't do it as well. And now when you get it to this point, you're going to slide this back. Now, I'm going to show you over here what we have. Okay. And you'll see here you have some wires hooked up. And here's where you have to be careful because, you know, you don't want to pull it too far. And remember how they're tucked in. Okay, so you're going to pull this out here. It's it's trying to come with the armature. So we're going to pull this out here. And we, we're going to have to disconnect these wires from the front so that they fall over. Okay, this is where it pays to videotape in case you forget. But you have one over here. The short one goes to this bottom left. And this top one on the left side goes over to the top right over here. And then there are two red short ones here. Now, this is, these are the two that you reverse if you want to reverse the direction of the motor. These two red ones. Now, once you disconnect these wires from inside here, you can pull this straight out with the rotor. And there's the rotor and the one half of the bell housing. This should separate here. 
I'm not going to pull it apart now until I give a, a closer look. So we'll leave this in one piece here. And uh, let me show you what the inside of here looks like. Not bad. You can see here the varnish looks very good on here. A little dirt here. Now, this is a split phase motor, and there are two sets of windings you'll see. This is a starter. The thinner wire is the starter winding, and then you also have the thicker wire is the run winding. So that's what's called a split phase, but uh, it looks good condition. So let's see what we got next. Now, same thing with this bell housing. You could pull this off this side, and you could see the the dirt and, and whatnot we have from. Now here are the only two vents here that draw in the air. So that's where you're gonna get all the dust. And you know, whenever you're dealing with buffing, any kind of buffing wheel, you're always gonna have that kind of fine dust or whatever. So we're gonna have to get that all out of there. So here we go now. You can see what we have. There is your stator, okay? I don't see any rub marks or anything. Looks good. We just got a lot of dust. Look at that. We're gonna have to vacuum and again with a paintbrush, get all that out of there. And we'll deal with the tag. Another important part, these are your thrust washers. They're set at the factory. They take so many of these washers to measure the end play or whatever. And that can wear, so you might have to add some more. But we don't want to lose the one. So you dig out. Make sure you don't have any stuck in here. And if you do, just dig it out with a paper clip or something. Put it on the edge here. Now, that's this is for my own, you know, so I know which goes where. The short end has this uh, procedure here. You see, now you pull this off gently. And uh, keep them all together like this. I like to, uh, I'm going to use a little zip tie here and, uh, and put them together so I know exactly which way they go back on. Now, one point, this is where this rides from, from the shaft here. The, this tip to about here is where it rides on the bushing, okay? It's nice and smooth. It's not scoring or anything. But over here where it was outside the motor, I did have some, even when I was pulling it foot through, I felt some resistance, even though I went over with the file. I'm going to have to hit this with the sanding belt because you don't have to worry about this little section here. But it did get marred up somehow. And I want, when I put that back in, I want this to go nice and smooth. This was fine. But if you look real close, I don't know if you can see, there are little burrs or whatever. You got to get that off. You don't want to mess up your... You know, you're bushing, especially after all this time. Now we're just going to do a simple cleaning like we did before. See all this dust? In it? That's all got to come out. Vacuum, Q-tips, clean everything out. One other point I'd like to make is I left the base on this part of the motor on. You know, it's only two screws that hold this base. See that base? It's only two screws, but it's so much easier to leave it on while you're working because it don't roll around. Now when I'm ready to do painting... I could pop that off. So that's a good tip that I didn't do last time. Leave the base on until, you know, you're ready to paint. Okay, now we're just going to lay everything out and attack each piece one at a time, making sure to clean everything individually. Now with the bell housings, once you have the inside cleaned here, what you want to do, the end caps, is you want to scrape off any, there was a lot of grease on here. We'll scrape that off with a, just a thick razor blade. So you see that? Just get most of this heavy stuff off, scrape it off. Then you go with a secondary hand wire brush here. Okay, we're going to scrape all that that we didn't get off with the, uh, the razor blade. You see how it's coming off? Now, the paint that they put on these, uh, these motors back then, again, they were meant to be in washing machine. They were hidden most of the time. So you never saw these motors. So they just put a, a quick spray on here to prevent rust because they were cast. Now, what you're gonna do is uh, we're gonna scrape this off here and then we're gonna go to the wire brush and you're gonna see it takes it instantly. All this uh, remaining paint will come right off because like I said, it was a quick paint job, not prepped too well. Now, here's the bell cap when it's uh, just wire brush. You see how nice it's all. You can prep this for paint very easily by wiping this down with a prep sole. Or, you know, we're going to go through this with the Dremel to make sure then to decide what color we want. But that's basically how these ends are done. And you do the same thing with every part. Just go over each piece and then get them prepped.
Now this is our primary cleanup. Everything has been paint removed. The grease is gone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to detail. Just make sure go over everything once again. Paint anything we wanted painted, and uh, and then reassemble it. And uh, hopefully everything will go back. And uh, everything's looking real good here, nice and clean. Um, and uh, everything seems to be working fine. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this vintage Delco motor looked like before we started. And we're calling this project almost done. Can't deny it. it. Looks pretty cool, huh? Look what we did here. Can you see? Can you see all the different facets that we covered with this? But uh, first of all, we took all the paint and we shellacked it. So that's the original casting color, which I always like. And the shellac always darkens a little bit the alcohol. So I think that just looks great. Then we removed all the paint from here and uh, and we buffed it out. It's it's pure metal, you know, polished, waxed, uh, screwed the tag on after we removed it. A little black on the strain relief of the cord, the base. Everything's good now. Everything's clean inside. Here's my problem uh this the primary the initial start is sticking and it, it was slow to begin with and now i don't know why let me show you what i mean okay let's plug it in and you see it needs that initial but it runs smooth the secondary beautiful but and listen You hear that centrifugal? It dumps. I just don't know how this centrifugal switch works. I don't know where it's supposed to make contact. Okay, here's an update. We tore apart the centrifugal switch. Now, here is the switch here. And basically, this little uh, this little felt pad rides on this. And as the speed increases, this will move away and let this come out. So, in other words, this is all this is is a rocker switch. Now, here is the way it's mounted on here, and it rocks this way and this way. Now, look over here. Do you see that? That is, it's going to have some arcing only because it's a, uh, you know, it's a contact switch, and there's current going through there, so that, I think, is our problem. So, we got to clean those contacts so it makes a good contact, because when this is closed like this, that's your starting coil. When it opens like this, with the centrifugal force brings that pad to the outside, that's when it hits the secondary. The secondary seems fine, so let's clean those contacts and see if we can't get this to operate correctly. Okay, here we have the contacts have been cleaned. Now what we're doing is we're taking some contact cleaner and uh, we're just wiping off these contacts here just to give it a really... You can see, even when they're clean, the contact cleaner... We'll get some additional, you know, that'll give a good contact. You just do this until the Q-tip comes up clear, and you do it on both sides of the contact, okay? Here's the inside where it makes contact, and you do the same thing here. Wipe it around. Make sure you have, you see that? There's always going to be a little bit residual, so you just keep doing it until the Q-tip comes up clean. Okay, this is the fourth time I've had this apart. The thermal switch... I thought it it wasn't it was stiff it wasn't moving right so uh here's what's supposed to happen okay you need when you get this all together you set it up to continuity okay you hear that beeping you should have continuity when you put these two tests leads into here when you push this down you should have continuity there you go that's the centrifugal switch and you should have continuity with with these two leads because that's the thermal switch check. That's why these things are here to check them. So just note to self. Oh, is that sweet or what? Okay, that's very rewarding. And uh, take a look at that shaft, how nice and balanced it is and uh, cleaned up with the belt sander. And uh, listen to the wind down after this shuts off.
Okay, so in closing, that was, believe it or not, that was a lot of work, but I was able to knock it out in, in a couple days so that you can be watching this today. But it, it is a lot of work, those electric motors. It's messy, it's dirty, and uh, it, it really puts your mind to thinking, especially when you run into problems. And, and uh, they made so many centrifugal switches and thermal switches and things like that. They made so many that each one is different. So it's not like uh, it was a standard thing and, and you can't find parts for these things. So that's why a lot of people will buy a motor and gut it out and, you know, take the best parts. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye. Is that sweet or what?